Hi, it's Jan Beta again. And what I'm going to do today is something I've been planning on doing for quite some time now. And yeah, I, I'm a bit uh, afraid of doing it because I don't have any experience with it. Um, yeah, let's not beat around the bush. It's time to change the SMD capacitors in this Amiga 1200. And what I'm going to do is to use um, these ceramic capacitors I bought. Um, yeah, I'm going to link in a list of the capacitors you um, usually need for recapping one of these. Um, yeah, I was a bit suspicious about uh, the fact that the electrolytic capacitors that are originally in here have slightly different, um, they behave slightly differently um, in a circuit than the ceramics capacitors. But I talked to some people about it and I asked them um, if they, about their experiences. And every person I asked said it is perfectly okay, the Amiga's are working fine with the ceramic capacitors. And yeah, the positive thing about ceramic capacitors is that they last for a very, very long time. Whereas electrolytics, um, they can dry out, they can get leaky. They, um, yeah, basically they change their values over time and um, the circuit doesn't function anymore. So without further ado, let's uh, open this up. I already removed the screws um, because yeah, they are basically it's, it's still open from the last video. I was too lazy to refit the screws and I knew that I would have to do this again. So, yeah, let's get to work. I think I'll, um, there's not going to be that much uh, talk there because I'm really not that experienced with SMD um, stuff. And yeah, I basically have to concentrate on what I'm doing here, I think. So let's get this on. As you can see, here's our board, and it looks quite okay. I guess I see one very dodgy um, looking cap here, at least. I think I'm going to remove the cables as well. Just getting in the way. What I'm probably going to do is to unscrew all the connectors in the back. There. I have to take out all the little screws here. I'll just use my pliers, I guess. Seems like I have the right tool for this in my uh, little iFixit uh, bit set I bought. I got this for, yeah, for um, smartphone repairs and stuff like that. I sometimes do. Very, I would recommend this. There is all the bits you you need in there to open um, more modern electronics. Uh, more modern meaning, uh, I guess, the late 80s and early 90s, being the earliest of the late electronics I'm talking about. So yeah, let's uh, remove this and then we can remove the bottom RF shield here. I guess, no problem. Uh, 
Okay, take this out. Okay, and as you can see, there's quite a few SMD electrolytics on there. And they all, yeah, they all, they look a bit bent and stuff. Not that great, actually. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna exchange them anyway. But, yeah. yeah, and I will try to clean any excess stuff that's beneath there. Yeah, so basically I'm gonna stop uh, talking now, I think. What I'm gonna do is to try the method I saw um, on the internet the most often and the, the one that uh, was the most convincing to me in the end was to just use a pair of pliers and turn these around and then um, yeah just remove the the pins that remain on there if you do it like this but you just basically break them off the board which is um, most people um, say that's the most um, quick and the least destructive um, for the board at least um, method to do this so let's try that and as my example here i'm gonna i think i'm gonna use this one here which is a 47 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor and yeah, it's looking quite dodgy it's quite standing at an angle and maybe has leaked so yeah let's uh, try this is actually the first time i try this i don't know if it's a good idea to try this on an a1200 board but what the hell so for science you're just supposed to grab this and then yeah, you grab it a bit harder i guess and then you wiggle it and you wiggle it some more and then it eventually comes off i know i need a better pair of pliers for this i guess a bigger one with more oomph There we go. Okay, so here's... Yeah, it just looks fine, I guess. Didn't damage anything. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it at all, but there's a slight discoloring. So I guess this has already begun to leak. Here's this little plastic uh, thing off that is beneath, beneath the electrolytics um yeah i guess i'll clean this and uh do the same for most of the, the other caps i'm gonna do it one time for the camera and um yeah i'm basically gonna do the rest without showing it in detail so yeah the iron's heated up I have a small tip on here. It's a small chisel tip. And yeah, let's see what you can do here. I'm taking off the little legs here that are remaining. And then I clean. Um, it with some isopropanol and my beloved toothbrush. To um, remove any electrolyte that may have leaked there. And I think I'm gonna use um, Q-tips here for the most part, because it's a lit, little bit smaller than the stuff I um, otherwise work on. Gives a nice, nice sound too, so great. 
So, and uh, yeah, I'm basically replacing this with a 47 microfarad ceramic capacitor that I bought. They come in these uh, little, tiny little um, SMD picking machines, pick and place machine uh, holders. So, I need one of these to position them and oh, to open the packaging, I guess. Okay, first of all, I'm going to clean these uh, pads here with some solder wick, I guess, to remove the old solder nicely. Yeah, these look very nice and shiny. Okay, that went quite well. And then I add a little flux. Just a bit of flux on there. And then I'll pick and place my component. And the polar polarity doesn't, uh, yeah, doesn't matter because it's a ceramic capacitor that hasn't. Isn't. I should probably hold this while I'm. So I'm just gonna stick a bit of solder on there. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm going to tin these little pads, I guess. Okay, I'm going to tin the pads and then I shall pick and place this here. So I guess I'm going to take one side and then I take the other side and try not to touch the um, plastic. Of the connector there. So yeah, I guess it's not very, very beautiful, but it'll probably do. Let's make this a bit, a bit nicer, I guess. On this side, I'm gonna have to turn this board around for quite a bit there to alone to let to see all the components there. So there we go. That's that's all right, I guess. Then I clean it up some more. Where's my toothbrush when I need it? There we go. So then I'm gonna do exactly this for the rest of the caps. This one has clearly leaked pretty badly. So the green there and the other one here as well. It's really, it's a bit wet, the plastic there, you can see that. Um, yeah, these definitely had to go. These were the ones that looked bulgy from the beginning. So we have to remove these anyway. So let's uh, go on here.
So, I got this all recapped. As you can see, I used the wrong size or another size of um, um, through hole electrolytics, which I had to lay down and bend the, the leads. Um, otherwise, I used my little uh, surface mount stuff and it worked out quite well, actually. I only chipped one trace on this one here, which I suspect was so um, corroded that it was easily one one pad just lifted off. I tried to connect it to yeah to another solder point there. I hope it works. I don't know yet. Um, I guess we'll have to try. So I'll put it in the case um, as far as I need to. And then I'm gonna power it up. Wow, okay, I have this uh, reassembled a bit. So, and I've connected it up um, to the PSU. And yeah, I'm pretty sure this is gonna explode uh, when I turn it on. So please cross your fingers now that this worked. So let's see. Okay, turning on the PSU. Yes, and look at that. I think it might just work still. Let's see. Woohoo! <laughs> and it still works. That was an operation that was quite horrible for me, I must say, I was really afraid of this. So, yeah, this worked out pretty well. Um, let's reassemble it, uh, I guess, and yeah, see if everything still works. So I got this all nicely reassembled. I would say let's put it up and hope that it still works. So yeah, this uh, seems to have worked. So if you like this, give it a little thumbs up and share this, subscribe to my channel. You can also support me with some money. Um, yeah, basically, thanks for watching. Hope um, you can use some of this to maybe do the same repairs. It's not that hard. It's not as hard as I thought. And yeah, it was basically the first major surface mount operation I did and it wasn't that bad. And it still works, eh? So, yeah. Basically, if I can do it, you probably can do it too. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Ambita. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.